Welcome to SO36 Berlin, where I meet uh, Hank von Hell, changed from Hank von Helvete, right? Yeah, kind of. So, uh, be playing in Berlin tonight, uh, how are you doing? Well, uh, it's it's a very dangerous area for me to be in Berlin. Uh, usually I get lost in the city and and actually have a great time for weeks and weeks. And Berlin disappearing is kind of uh, a risk I always take when entering this wonderful city of sin and joy. Amen to that. Uh, <laughs> Pretty decent tour is uh, well underway now. So how has it been? It's pretty been pretty decent actually. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it was kind of amazing uh, that we kind of expanded the tour from five shows to now forty-five shows or something. You know, both both on this side of uh, of New Year and and the U.S. Uh, in January, February, and. Uh, and uh, I think one billion people will get to see the show if everybody if everybody come and what's very interesting is also that I have done because of big data you know uh, that you can actually do algorithms so we have scanned all the people who have bought tickets and they are all tinder and grinder matches with uh, me so it's actually a huge Tinder grinder date tour. Even though your new uh, shark status, I read on uh, yeah, online. My identity crisis as a shark trapped in a man's body uh, will be solved with a lot of making out with my audience, uh, with my matches. Yeah. Okay, and going back to the tour, uh, how has it been for you personally, uh, fronting band again has after been, the break? Yeah, well, it's fucking great to be be on stage again with my with my audience. You know this guy, Hans Eric, or what's his name? He, he's been like doing all this other stuff for many years now, but but now uh, I'm, I'm back. Hank is back, and I've taken my body back, and I'm. I'm giving it to the fans, and uh, it's fucking awesome to see all the lovely people uh, on the rock scene uh, again. Yeah. Okay, and uh, what prompted your comeback? Mm. That's good. Uh, mm? As solo artist, uh, nah, I just got some bills that I couldn't pay, you know, and and. Uh, this guy from Sony called if I wanted to do a comeback, and I was like, "Yeah, it's time, I guess. I need to pay these bills, man. You know." So, yeah. Okay, your album Egomania came out last month. Uh, what are your own thoughts about the album? We all read the reviews, but what are your thoughts and feelings? Well, it's it's all me it's all about me and and that is the perfect rock and roll album in the world you know when it's uh, it's about me but uh i don't need to explain it to anybody because if you listen to egomania it's about you you know and and uh, that's the whole point of egomania it's that everybody who listens to it actually can use this album for their own egocentric purposes you know it's it's a masturbation album basically okay. and it might be you know too early to ask this but uh, how grand plans do you have for this solo project well uh, I have uh, uh, I have called Elon Musk and he has cancelled his plans for Mars and will now uh, use all his resources to set up uh, the first uh, rock and roll show on the moon in history. Radio, not not in Mars. No, nah, <laughs> no, because then you can't come back, you know. And and there's gonna be some after parties after the show that I want to attend, you know. <laughs> and uh, what kind of rock and roll lifestyle do you lead nowadays? Oh, it's just comfortable sofas, quality Sinfandel red wine, um, and. Uh, and uh, a collecting of uh, of uh, pet animals uh, of of uh, of different kinds you know and i live in an amusement park 
uh, and uh, and yeah, it, it's kind of cool. Um, the hunt for comfortable furniture is my main uh, my main activity uh, in uh, in my spare time between shows. You know. Fuck off! I'm in the into you. I'm a rock star. You're not. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I just have to ask. Uh, do you still follow Turbo Negro's career today, and what kind of feelings does? Oh uh, well, uh, Turbo Negro have been uh, doing great with two albums, and uh, it's there. It's great music. Uh, they they play and they they work out fine. So it's just a lot of mutual. Uh, love. Uh, I don't know if this um, belongs at all to your uh, rock star lifestyle, but I just heard some rumors that you are working on some uh, documentary series. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about that in the? Well, yeah, I've, I've been part of producing a documentary called Rex Barbaricum. Uh, Rex Barbaricum. Uh, it's about all those people groups who traveled into uh, to Europe from uh, yeah just before yeah between the Roman Empire fell and the Viking Age began you know it's about you know the Hun you know Attila it's about the Gothic people you know it's about Vandals and barbarians and yeah a lot of unwritten history there uh, that kind of uh, explains a little bit about uh, who we are in the world today. Okay, thank you so much and uh, break a leg tonight. Thank you. Uh. Mm. It's, it's this Sinfandel, it's a very, you want a glass of wine? You want you want to taste this fucking great wine, you know? It's Sinfandel. I said no, before, so no, it's 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 the best grape ever because if if you like barbecue, you know, uh, you need to have like a barbecue friendly red wine. And and the Californians, they have uh, produced some Sinfandel wines that are fucking awesome. You need to taste this. Come on. I'm not a connoisseur, but I'm not I'll either. I just. <laughs> I just put some fancy word about a glass of red wine to excuse me for getting a little bit drunk in the afternoon. Yep. yep. <laughs> All right.